August 26, 2011, a suicide bomb explosion rocked the United Nations headquarters in Abuja. April 26, 2012, another explosion at the Disney facility in the Jabi area of Abuja. April 14, 2014, another explosion at a popular bus park in Nyanya, Abuja. June 25, 2014, the Banex Plaza Business District was also affected. These attacks, which bore the hallmark of the Boko Haram terrorist group, were not only limited to the federal capital, but were witnessed across the northern states with the northeast bearing the brunt. Hundreds were reported dead, with several critically injured. Almost five years on, Plus TV Africa revises the stories of some of the affected victims. I lost my husband, my three children. This is to survive. Only this to survive out of the five children that I have. So I lost two boys. And my husband and my daughter. Both our car went to Hajis. I find myself here in ICRC on the 1st May, early morning at around 4 a.m. On the first May. So when that thing happened, actually I don't know where I am due to the blast and the injury that I have sustained. So it was one of my staff son that took his car and brought me down to ICRC on that day, first May. While many of them admit they have been abandoned by the federal government with no psychosocial or monetary support to rebuild their lives. They say they live in constant fear of the unknown. This thing happens to me, I'm almost thinking of my patients. <clears throat> the second challenge there is that uh, I am scared of my house and that place of my life. I came down here almost since first May to death for almost four weeks now. I have been looking for a house to relocate. Also, staff at one medical facility where some of the victims have been treated in Medugri say the war is far from over. As a facility is sometimes overstretched. Uh, our ward is a capacity of 36 beds, uh, both our female and the male side, or the male side taking the higher part because most of the uh, most of our patients are male. But now at least we are getting most of female because the children and the female they stay on one side. We get like overboard sometimes, more than 36. And you can imagine the challenge we will have when we have a, an overflow of patients. For example, when you have a mass casualty and you have maybe patient, and up to 40 something or 50 patients and we have to like, uh, put them in the same place, it's not possible. So this makes us uh, more, it gives us so much challenge and we have to look for other places. With hundreds of victims scattered around the country, battling to pick up the pieces of their lives. It is hoped that the federal government will come to their aid, just as they promised. Amadine Uyi, Plus TV Africa.